Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to share with you my top middle grade books that I read in 2020. I read about 60-ish middle grade books this year, more than I read like any other year, and I thought that middle grade deserved its own top 10 video. So I'll go from number 10 to number 1, from least to most favorite. I have four honorable mentions, and these include From the Desk of Zoe Washington, Other Words from Home, Prairie Lotus, and maybe he just likes you. So book number 10 on my list is Beezus and Ramona. It was super funny, heartwarming, and it felt timeless for a book that was published so many decades ago. I also super related to Beezus and I didn't necessarily anticipate that. You can tell she's just like over Ramona's hijinks and she's pretty ridden with anxiety about the kinds of things that Ramona is up to. She just wants to follow all the rules. So yeah, definitely me as a child. Book number nine on my list is Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. This is a book that is filled with so much heart. It's a book that does representation in such a subtle way. Like you know it's happening but the author isn't explicitly talking about it and I love when books do that. It's also a book that shows how parents and children can have positive discussions about more difficult topics. Honestly, it was just a really delightful book that put a smile on my face. Book number eight on my list is Land of the Cranes by Aida Salazar. This is a book in verse about the main character who ends up in ice detention with her mother, what that experience is like. This is a really heavy book, but I think it's a book that's really poetic and how it uses the novel in verse aspect of it to show us symbols and to lay out this ground work for these two characters that we're following and the acknowledgments the author talks about why she's writing this book it's just a really powerful book that i would recommend to anyone who likes novels in verse especially middle grade novels in verse it definitely inspired me to want to pick up other books by this author number seven on my list is the list of things that will not change by rebecca stead this is a really refreshing book for me because i didn't anticipate liking it as much as i did i think what worked here the best for me is how much this book focuses on character development it is a character study of the main character B and how her family is changing. I think it also really shows the resilience of kids and how often while kids may be having emotions about the situations that you know their lives are taking them in they are still so up for the challenge and like a different way to be. I also really loved the depiction of having eczema in this book because it felt like a very authentic depiction of that and something that I'd never read in a book before and I also really love the way that this book describes going to therapy and Bee's reactions to her therapist. Those conversations made me really love this book. If you like really slow paced books where not much happens in the plot but a lot happens to the character, this is a book that I would recommend to you. Book number six on my list is Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. This is a book that was such a comfort read for me when I read it. It really lifted my spirits and it made me smile. This is a book about community and family and believing in yourself to follow your dreams and to follow your passions. I mostly love this book so much for the family depiction and the community depiction of it. It was definitely a book that made me feel really happy inside. Book number five on my list is The Night Diary by Veera Hiranandani and this is a book about the partition of India and Pakistan in like the 1940s. It's a book that is written in letters. What I loved about this, like many of the other books that I've mentioned here, is the character work because this book focuses on a main character writing letters to her mother who is um, no longer with them and just how wise Nisha comes across and how she is trying to survive her bond with her brother and her dad made this book so powerful and so meaningful to me. It's a book also that is not set in a time period or in a location that I had read from before and I also really liked it for that. Book number four is another Another book that's written in letters, so maybe that's something that I like in middle grade. It is Letters from Cuba by Ruth Behar. This is a historical fiction book like The Night Diary where the main character moves to Cuba with her father to try to raise money to then get the rest of her family over from Poland due to religious conflict and, you know, World War II. This is a book that focuses a lot on how differences make us stronger. It's a book that focuses on how your background and your religious differences is something that you should value and your friends um, to share different customs and traditions and it's a book that showed me how this is so prevalent in Latin American countries especially. It just reminded me of the kinds of different friends that I had growing up from all different kinds of backgrounds. I just loved how the main character came across as someone who was very flawed but also very confident in her like 
business acumen and in her way of making friends. Book number three is Genesis Begins Again by Alicia D. Williams. This is a book that really spoke to me because of the main character and how she comes across to us. She's really caring and really wonderful and really smart. She's very talented but she doesn't necessarily know all of those things about herself and the way that some of her family members look at her and talk about her, make her feel bad about herself. And this is a book about her realizing why that is wrong when it comes to talking about color in the black community and how colorism has affected black children growing up. What I love most about this book is seeing the transformation of Genesis. This is a book also that looks at how having positive influence in your life can really help you grow including a teacher and some really good friends at school. I just really love this and I could tell that it came from such a beautiful place in the author's heart who is also a teacher. Book number two on my list is A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan. This is a book that is an ode to public libraries so if you enjoy public libraries this is a book that I would recommend to you. I think this is one of the most realistic depictions of why people like to go to libraries, people like to volunteer at libraries, and people like to work at libraries. It's about the people through the eyes of the main character who is serving a punishment at the public library. She gets to know the library worker and the library patrons that are regulars at the library and it shows you this place that builds community. I really felt for what the main character was going through. Her side plot is kind of about the mortifications of being a young girl and also something that I could relate to but in general I came to this and I love this because of how it depicted libraries. It was written by a library worker. From how she depicts libraries in here I know that she is a library worker. And book number one on my list, my favorite middle grade book of the year is Clean Getaway by Nick Stone. This book kind of surprised me honestly because I thought it's kind of short and I'm just gonna enjoy it and give it three and a half stars and move on and instead I found this really beautiful depiction of a grandson and grandmother and also this whole idea of using civil rights history to depict how this family has changed over time. It is exhilarating, there's a lot of excitement in this book and adventure because of all of the road trip aspects but I think the most important thing in this book is how beautiful Jima and Scoob particularly come across. Scoob is a fully realized three-dimensional character and I really valued that. All of his flaws, all of his you know inner turmoil and anger towards different aspects in his life and also the things that he really values and loves in his life about his family and um, about himself. So I really really loved Clean Getaway. Definitely would recommend the audiobook. I really enjoyed the audiobook experience of it. And that is it for my top 10 middle grade reads of 2020. If you've read any of these or if I've now inspired you to read any of these, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.